Hey guys, John here, and to kick off this week's GMS sound design, I have made a super saw. Now we all know what super saws are, but super saws are a whole level above super. So with that being said, we're going to listen to the super saw while we look at this nice render I did of GMS. So here we go. All right, that was the Super Saw. So if you like the patch or this nice render for the background, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's dive into this thing and see how it was created because this thing actually has kind of a little secret weapon to it. So first things first, let's go over to our playlist here. This is kind of what we're looking at here. So for example, let's go over to our pattern here and let's just look at our synth here and kind of play with it a little bit. So that's basically what it's gonna sound like by itself. And you can also use it as a lead as well. So very cool right there. Okay, so first things first, let's get into this here. So this uh, this patch here is going to be using for the first uh, oscillator here is going to be the saw retro. And this is going to be no change in pitch or anything like that. So for the second one is also going to be a saw, but just the regular one here. And this is going to be up one octave here. And we can see that uh, on the operator, oscillator, I keep wanting to say operator, but oscillator number two is at 29% in the mix. So we're just using those two, no three, but we are using a little bit of noise because you kind of do want to get that more sandish kind of sound to to uh, to this match here. So 0.34% on the sound. We're not going to be worrying about any modulation. I did try a little bit of it, but I, I felt like it wasn't right for this patch. So that is going to be down. Next up, we have the uh, the phase here. So this is kind of important because I kind of you kind of have to listen closely and kind of just move this phase for oscillator to kind of just to find that right spot where things aren't canceling too much or they're not really too the same. So with that being said, the phase is 0.23 for oscillator number two. Now moving on for voices, this is going to be the max voices at the top of 16 and stereo all the way to the left and right. So drag this stereo button all the way to the top. And also the detune is going to be important because we want this sound to be detuned. But not too detuned where it sounds bad. So it's kind of a fine line. So this is going to be 55%. So if we went all the way to the right full detune, it would sound kind of bad like this. And that's a little bit too much, but we also don't want it too tuned because it just doesn't have that uh, that supra-ness to it, if you will. So 55 is kind of a good medium point for that. All right, and with that being said, this is going to be for the keyboard. It's going to be up one octave right here, so select the plus one over here. So now let's kind of get into this stuff over here. So for the filter, uh, it's not really much going on here. So the cutoff is going to be all the way at the top. So we can kind of skip over this right over here. And for the envelopes, one and two are going to be off. We can know that by this amount slider being all the way at the bottom. So don't worry about the envelopes here. Now for LFO one, this is kind of interesting because we are going to be affecting the filter. So we're not really using the filter here, but we are kind of playing with it a little bit here, if that kind of makes sense. This is going to be on beat here, and this is going to be one four, one over four, and the amount's tiny at 0 0.08. So that's kind of what we're doing there at a really exaggerated value. So 0 0.08 is going to be right up here, and it's very minimal. It's just these kind of small things that really kind of drive everything into, in, drive everything together. So that's going to be on the filter and it's going to be a sine wave for the shape there. And then nothing for LFO2 as we see the slider is all the way down for the amount. So really only using the first LFO1 as a recap on beat, filter, and then sine wave at 0 0.08 for the amount. These retrigger, invert, and these two buttons here are going to be off. So don't worry about those. 
Now let's look at the envelope here. So the uh, level envelope here and the amplitude is gonna be straight up and down, so noon, so you can skip over this knob. Now for the attack is gonna be 0.22 because we don't really want such an, a quick attack. It kind of, it, it'll sound quick but there is a little bit of fade to it. So this is 0.22, all the way to the left would be like this. So it's a little bit of roundingness to the attack. It's still kind of instant, but it's not so pointy. It's a, it has a little bit of curve to it. The decay is gonna be all the way at the top, sustain all the way at the top, and the release is at 0.71, so quite a healthy amount of a release, because once we hit the notes, we kind of want it to uh, let it go a little bit here. So moving on from that, the pan is in the center, pitch is in the center, the frequency slide is on, as we can see by this little knob right here, and this frequency slide is gonna be 0 0.20. All right, so moving on from there, let's get into our effects here. So basically I have this low pass filter on just a little bit here, the frequency is all the way at the top, and this bandwidth is, let's see what exactly what it is, 0.50. So this is kind of giving a little bit more of that top end. So yeah, I thought I'd point that out right there. Moving on from there, uh, we're not really gonna be using any of this modulation, so kind of don't worry about that as well, because it's at 0.5, so it's in the center. Moving on from there, we have echo, also known as delay. I don't know why it says echo, that's always kind of weird to me, but anyway. So we have the feedback here at 59%. The filter is going to be at 50%. So yeah, yeah, 59 and 50 for the filter here. And this is going to be glued as well. So if you didn't know, once we hit glue, that's kind of like holding down this effect here. Whereas if you go in other ones, you can kind of like click your mouse in here and kind of move it around and kind of preview it. But glue is going to stay on. And this is going to come in handy in a little bit over here. So... What we're doing here, now we have this trancing. So this is kind of the secret weapon thing that I was talking about. So if we look at our playlist here, what I've done here, so this glue is going to be automated. So all the way at the bottom is off, all the way at the top is going to be on. And the reason for that is let's kind of do something outside of here. So let's grab just a re regular drum pattern here. Let's plot this down over here. Let's make some uh, kind, of, kind of a feel like that. And let's loop this little section right over here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as we extend this, this glue thing here, so make sure in the future, once you're doing this or you're automating the glue knob, make sure that you're always selected on the effect here, because let's say you automate the glue knob on this trance, but then you go over here and you're looking at, I don't know, distortion. It's going to still turn this on and you're, it's going to turn on some distortion and kind of ruin your sound. So always keep that in mind. So if you're ever automating this glue knob, make sure to leave it at the value that you're going to be actually using. So with that being said here, Let's play some stuff here. So the sound is kind of static, right? And now take a listen to what happens once I hit this glue. So what's kind of going on there is giving that kind of pumping feeling, that pumping vibe. And that's very cool to automate because you can have this patch kind of do a static type of thing. And then once the drums kick in, you can kind of have that going on. So here's another demonstration of that again. And then it automates it back to off because I have this last point down here as off. So I thought I would mention that just in case because that's a very cool thing here. So that's pretty much all that's going on inside the synth. Let's take a look to see what's actually happening within our uh, effects chain. So I have an EQ on here and basically what this is doing, I'm cutting off a little bit of low ends here just to kind of get that mud out. It's not too much here, but this over here, this 254 hertz can get muddy and in the way of a lot of other, th other things. Because with a Supra saw or a Super saw, there's a lot of saw waves going on, a lot of unison going on. So it's kind of covering a huge span of the frequency range. And that being said, we do want to cut out some of this mud, some of the stuff that we don't want. And we're bringing this nice texture airiness up. And this is at a 5.7K. Uh, so it's going to kind of help give the airiness to it. And then a little bump over here. So without the CQ, it's going to sound kind of dull, like a blanket's over it. And then with...
So it's kind of clearing up our sound for other stuff like the bass and maybe the kick drum and other stuff to kind of shine through a little bit more. And then we have the fruity balance, which is basically automating the volume because right over here, when I turn on this pumping, this glue for that trance effect, we do lose a little bit of, of perceived volume as it's kind of bringing the volume down, so on and so forth. So we kind of lose an overall volume. So I just brought this up a little bit here. And since we're on this topic, it's always more efficient to actually automate the volume through something like Fruity Balance as opposed to the faders. Because one, you don't want to have dancing faders looking at you because that's obnoxious and it doesn't really look cool personally. But also it's kind of wrong because let's say you're automating these faders at different values and then you want to turn down this fader overall like 3 dB. You're kind of stuck. Now you have to go to your automation, kind of bring that down or put a plug in on it and then bring that volume down. So you're kind of painting yourself into a corner if you automate these faders by themselves. So it's always better to automate the volume from the Fruity Balance. And then you can always adjust your fader here as an overall kind of a master level. So hopefully if you didn't know that, you do now and that will help you with your mixing and your automation. So yeah, that's pretty much this here in a nutshell. The other stuff we need to talk about is the post effect. So what I do here is generally I always have my Valhalla reverb kind of going on here. That's kind of a staple for a lot of my work. And then I also have a little bit of uh, of delay four here. So this is gonna be delay three right here. That's kind of always just in my channel rack. And as we select this, this delay is also getting sent to the reverb. So it's kind of nice too, once you send your signal to a reverb, then you're also send, sending your signal to the delay and that delay is also getting sent to the reverb. So you have that same reverb on those delays. So if you're sending your effect to a delay, highly recommend to also send it to the same reverb and kind of maybe dial it down a little bit. So the kind of the the, the reverb the the, uh, the delays are kind of also soaked in that same type of reverb to kind of make it a little a little more continuous continu if that's even a word continuous I have no idea hopefully you get the point there so that's basically this this one in a nutshell it's not too complicated the sessions the session's not going too much here but I thought I'd talk about these little automation things here and this trance stuff uh, over here so going forward if you have not been updated now so with these patches here. I have started saving them in this menu here in the wrapper. So saving them here as opposed to saving them inside this actual program, because I like the, the fact of actually having going here and going through different uh, menus here. It's a lot easier for me to kind of just cycle through it. And hopefully it is for you because you can also make folders here. Like I have my own folder here and you can also have, you know, the, the presets you've downloaded from other stuff in those folders. It's a lot faster going from here than like clicking this, scrolling through it and so on and so forth. So. The free patch, if you want to download this, is in the video description below, but keep in mind, you'll have to load it from this menu here, or I mean this menu here, and this uh, drop down here. So make sure if you're installing it, an easy way to do that is click this arrow here, go to save preset as, and that's going to open up a directory, and that's where GMS is going to be looking for that folder. So the file you get from me, make sure to place that in that folder, and then you will be able to see it up here in your presets, all nice and organized. Also highly recommend whatever folder that is, you can also create a new folder and then put those patches in there. So if you're collecting these different patches from me, you can just make a folder from my stuff and then put all those patches in that folder so it's easy to access it right here through a folder right here. A little bit more organized kind of helps things in the long run. So hopefully that makes sense. This patch is kind of really fun to make. Um, I like the superness to it. We have a little bit more than a, just a super saw. So with that being said, let's play a sound with a super saw. And thank you so much for watching. Here we go. Just kidding. Let's play from the actual real song. <laughs> I left that loop there. Good Lord. Here we go. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.